Good evening, everyone. Tonight is July 27th, 2016. It is a Wednesday, and we are the Dastardly Jailmen. I am Neil, and with me, I have Frank. Say hi, Frank. Hello there. Tonight, we're going to be talking about nostalgia and the appeal of retroactive media. So, Frank, what what are you excited about? Nostalgia-wise? Sure. I mean, I think... I think, like, you know, we need to discuss immediately the elephant in the room, which is Episode 8. Because it, Episode 8 and, and 7 and all the, all the Star Wars movies that are coming, are going to just be squirted out of the, the, the ovaries of, of Disney are, uh, are going to be literally riding on the, the giant gust of wind that is the general exhale of of all the fans weeping for nostalgia i mean because that's all it is like you have the magic the lightning in the bottle of the first three that is literally just just everyone needs more star wars and 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 they don't care i think star wars is one of those those franchises that that it can move on its own momentum and it doesn't matter if the movies are terrible prequels that you know it, it is fueled by all the nostalgia that you can possibly imagine. Same thing, all the little toys and stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I mean, is it a bad thing? In the case of Star Wars, no, because Star Wars, like the legacy that they've got, they they continue to build on. They continue to build on the lore. They 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 go back and they little they kind of like shore up little uh uh plot holes and, and make things make more sense and extend the universe stuff, but they actually have the ability, the time, and, and the license to be able to go back and make books that cover this little thing that they said. That Then they can make you know other movies for this movie, and then they make TV series and comic books, and so they can really explain the larger universe to where things that didn't make sense in the original movies now make sense. So in that case, nostalgia is really working for it because everybody wants that. You know what so, I'm yeah, I hear you. So, so like, episode seven did pretty well. I mean, as far as uh, what people rate it, it's okay. They didn't say it was, you know, second coming of Christ or anything like that. But they hyped it up that way. Uh, episode eight is going to probably be just as good in terms of hype. Yeah. In terms of quality, it's probably going to be just as good. See, and the thing about episode seven, I mean, realistically, episode seven is actually more of a victim of nostalgia and uh, being crushed under its own mythos because everyone had a certain level of expectations because it was Star Wars. But then in order to try to feed into that into that Star Wars lore and and the Star Wars mold, they attempted to essentially almost recreate episode uh, four. Yeah. A new, a new hope. It was almost. It was almost really like a a one for one, throughout the entire thing. Yeah. And and I and I I mean I recognize that whenever I was watching it, but at the same time I also kind of didn't really care because it was still really well done. To me, I really liked it. I know a lot of people didn't like it, and I don't care about those people because I'm super self centered. And but I liked it, and that's what's important. Cause if I'm happy, everyone else should be happy too. And but man, you know, I feel as far as like a a storytelling it really it really suffered because of itself it suffered it suffered its own uh its own branch of uh of nostalgic poisoning you know you know oh, what i'm yeah. saying I, I hear exactly what you're saying and the whole the whole fact it was basically just yeah you're right it was a recycled version of episode four mm-hmm. i mean it, it was told with different characters it was told in a different place and it you know paid homage to certain characters that came back and it was more of a <gasps> He's from the. He's from episode four. I, I, and, and you know, so I. It's it's not, it's a standalone movie in itself. But I mean, it it was basically just a giant fan service. Oh yeah. Which, I appreciate when you know studios, go out of their way to appease their fans, but, to a degree, when it becomes just a. I'm only doing this because people asked me to, and they just completely forget how to make a fucking movie, uh, it turns into very ineffective storytelling to me. Um, right. I mean, you look at Game of Thrones, for example, or The Walking Dead, 
you look at those two shows and a lot of uh, the story is written based on what fans want and it makes it it makes it ineffective and it makes it so that certain characters that need to die don't die because what I mean like Daryl for example in The Walking Dead not that he should die I mean he's probably one of the most skilled people on the on the team there but you know people have shirts that say if Daryl dies we riot I mean <laughs> and that's and the, and I feel like that's actually like a literal truth for those people I think they will <laughs> I mean I'm pretty sure that like you know cities will burn and cars will be flipped and you know so I mean I don't like the fact that you know the fans are strongly dictating how the stories are going to go um it needs to be uh, they they need to lock the writer in a fucking solitary confinement and say just do what you do man don't let anybody fucking affect you <laughs> and that's that's the hard part because like a lot of a lot of different franchises especially ones that have like that that are franchises and have like a, such a, a long reach and such a such a legacy uh like Star Wars uh you you do want to a certain degree please your fans because it's good mar- it's good marketing it's good you know to to give the fans more or less what they want but at the same time to surprise them with something but then the hard part is that you know you're not going to please everybody because that's just life and you you run into people who are so incredibly vocal about what they didn't like that it almost feels like the entire movie's been shitty because of it. But if you try to play to the overall crowd, more people think that you're just kind of being gun shy about trying to change things up. So, I mean, it's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't. And it's not really fair. Well, pretty much. I mean, I, I think certain stories or certain uh, franchises should be sacred, in my opinion. Like, like what? I don't know. Like. Like Game of Thrones, for example, that's actually since you know George R. R. Martin is no longer involved, like heavily in the uh, the way the show goes. The it's up to the directors now and up to the you know the producers to put together the show. So now they're being influenced by what the fans want. I think that there are certain characters that should have died by now. That, like who? Uh, like Arya, for example. Um, I think she's a very popular character and. Given her circumstances, she should have been dead by now. <laughs> she she's a victim of of fortune, though. Sure, you know, <laughs> she's she's kind of like fate's child, and I think that's what makes her really interesting to me. Yeah, but uh, that's that's uh, one example. I mean, like, I I think that this story so far has been great. Don't fuck it up by letting the fans dictate who who lives and who dies, kind of thing. Right. So, I mean, that that's been one of the things about Game of Thrones is that it just fucks with your mind so much like like season 1, you think you think things are going great and then your favorite character dies like that. And <laughs> and you're just like, "Uh, oh. Okay. Um but then you don't ever really get that feeling again. I mean, you you do get some unexpected deaths later on, but it's never to that degree. I mean, it's never like I don't know what to believe anymore. And that was, I mean, the amount of emotion I had when that happened. Like, I knew, I mean, people warned me about the show, and I was pretty late to it. But when I started watching it, I did not not see that coming. So it's it, it, it basically defined how the show should go from then on out. And then it didn't, I mean, to that degree ever again. Maybe because... Are we talking about, like, surprises? Surprises or just like real like popular characters dying, where like the the fans didn't weren't allowed to essentially dictate like you know who was a favorite, etc. Yeah, and, and the more more like the the realism that hey, just because this person does all the right things doesn't mean they're gonna survive in the end. You know, the noble people, they they're the heroes and yada yada yada, but all of a sudden you know they get knifed in the back. You know? George R. R. Martin must have been that snooty asshole in school that just like just sat there in the corner and just bitched about everybody, <laughs> because like he is the he is the proponent of nice guys finish last. Like he, because every time somebody's like does like a righteous thing, he massively punishes them for it. I mean, like they don't just die; they get their fucking skull literally ripped apart by a giant man. <laughs> you know, I mean, like you, you like oh you you did a good thing. Well, we're gonna burn your house down and then with you in it, 
you know, <laughs> or you did, you're trying to do the right thing. We're going to kill your whole family and your unborn children. I mean, like, you know, no, because he was probably sitting there where, like, some guys, like, you know, oh, man, you know, George, I, I went to church last night, and, you know, I met, I met this beautiful girl. We gave promise rings to each other, and he's like, that's great. And then he's in this little notebook. He's writing, like, you know, John and Debbie got caught in a car fire. It was <laughs> hours before anyone saw them again. <laughs> Uh, that would actually make a lot of sense. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? I mean, he he's he is he is a hateful troll of a man. Uh, but you know, regarding uh nostalgia. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, so so would it would be a good example? Do you think that nostalgia has um reared up as being like a a of a, a forward mover of a franchise? Mad Max. That's a good one. That is definitely a good one. And in this case, nostalgia kind of helped it because without nostalgia, Mad Max would definitely never have been made again because after, what was there three of them originally? Um, I know there was Thunderdome and it was fucking terrible. There was the original, there was a Road Warrior, and then there was uh, Beyond Thunderdome. Right. Thunderdome was awful. Uh, and after Thunderdome, it was it was conceivable that there would never be another one ever. Sure. But because like of the of the the landscape and because of like the the cult following that the Mad Max movies had luckily we got another one luckily they they did it so good and they they didn't attempt to they didn't attempt to retell the original Mad Max they just made it a standalone this is like this could have been days after Thunderdome this could have been years after Thunderdome this could have been Thunderdome never happened you know like sure. they never they never like really gave it that the the credence to, to of of self retrospect where you would actually be confused that you know what was that what's he talking about who the fuck is that they never did that and that and that was one of the, the massive things to its credit because if they if they had attempted to to connect with the other stories mm -hmm. then then it would have been it would just would have been terrible I will say personally that I thought the uh, storyline of Mad Max Fury Road was absolute dog shit. Uh, but I didn't care because everything else was great. I mean, yeah. I didn't I didn't care for the oh we're gonna run away from the bad man. Okay, just kidding. We're gonna turn around. We're gonna go back to the bad man. <laughs> and then that, that was the story. It was a very it was a very simple, very silly story. But you know, it was one of those stories where it, it's like the story is basic, but it's it's in the telling that that they really kind of shined it through. The art direction, um, the 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 acting, you know. We usually it's the opposite. It's the acting and the 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 art direction that really kind of like leaves the story hanging. Sure. But in this case, the story was just kind of meh. But then everything else about it was just so good. Oh yeah, everything. So everything. good. And you know, in that movie, this is this is this is total side talk from nostalgia. It has nothing to do with nostalgia, but I'm gonna bring it up anyway. Charlize Theron. They cut that bitch's arm off, shaved her head, covered her in blood, mud, probably her own urine. And I would still hit it like the fist of an angry god. <laughs> what well, is it with that woman that, that doesn't matter what she does, how she looks, she is still unbelievably attractive. I um, I then invite you to watch Monster. Or The Monster. That's the one where she chubbed up, right? She uh, wore like... Uh, fuck. What's the name of that kid? Uh, Ugly face. He was a ginger. Had curly red hair. That doesn't narrow it down at all. That's like old movie. Uh, had Cher in it. <laughs> that really doesn't help me. Okay, well I'm sure our viewers will tell me. But uh, basically, she had an ugly ass face. They like did some really good makeup to make her look ugly. Right, I'm looking it up. <laughs> you look it up. I'm now. looking it up. But uh, it's called Monster or the Monster. Basically, it's her and uh, Christina Ricci. Uh, oh yeah, I did her. <laughs> You'd still hit it. Oh, oh absolutely. God. Can she keep the teeth? <laughs> <gasps> can she keep the teeth so I can knock them out? <gasps> no, I definitely hit it. <laughs> Something wrong with you. <laughs> you look. She's got them crazy eyes. Oh, you know, she's man. the kind of one like you know, like you, you put the bag over her head so she starts to freak out. You should really watch that movie though. I think you might like it. It's basically she's a prostitute. And uh, she gets tired of her job, so she decides to go on a killing spree of all the Johns. 
Well, I mean, except I for there was there was one guy, there was one guy, he was a virgin, and she gave him a handy out of pity, <laughs> and didn't That's kill him. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's nice because she gave him a handy, but I mean. <laughs> But yes, that's that was a that was a very weird movie, but it's worth at least one watch. Is it was it was it Antichrist weird? No. No, it wasn't that weird. I mean, exactly what happened. She or, actually she actually looks like Mickey Rourke in this movie. Yeah. She, she looks like Mickey she went out of her way to look like Mickey Rourke looks like normally. <laughs> That was a conscious decision. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she 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 was like, I'm sure that that's probably what she did. She probably went back and watched the wrestler like a couple of times, and and probably probably um the second Iron Man movie was like, I can do this. I can do. I can look like him. That's easy. <laughs> I can act like him. Just like act like you literally just don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> the wrestler was a great movie, by the way. I'm gonna be an Iron Man. Uh, fucking whatever. <laughs> yep, sure. I got a bird. No, it doesn't matter. I'll talk like a Puerto Rican, but he's Russian. I'll talk like a Puerto Rican. <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Burke, please try not being terrible. Mr. Burke, fuck you. <laughs> uh, another uh, another good franchise that was rebooted. Evil Dead. The, okay, now let's... Okay, hold on. Hold on. Let's. I feel like you're saying good. And I feel like I feel like this is a very loose interpretation good. of the word good. I feel like good is really stretching it. I mean, like you know, the first Evil Dead, it was a it was a good it was a good horror movie. The second one, I mean, I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> it was basically <laughs> the same one. It was it was that weird lurchy place of we're kind of a slasher movie, but we're also sort of like a B listed comedy. And then you got Army of Darkness, which is just it's a full on shit show. <laughs> I mean, like, and I they, love it. They went straight Hercules and Xena. La, 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 la. I mean, they got the the shotgun hand or the, the the saw hand and the shotgun, and now they now he's on stars, and he's fat. <laughs> I mean, like, is there a weight limit to being a superhero? <laughs> Stop it right now. Now, actually, the the Evil Dead show I watched a few ep- episodes of. I didn't really get too far into it. I was like, "Oh, look, it's back on," and I'm like, "Okay, I've I've had enough of this." <laughs> but but the it's the, been on for second season, and Lucy Lawless is in it. I mean, which doesn't surprise me because she's married to one of the producers. Well, they always her um, Sam Raimi, Rob Taper, yep, all of them. Lucy Lawless always end up making movies together, but she was in Spartacus, and I got to see her boobies. And it was basically, I'm not even going to lie, it was basically a check mark off my bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, all right, rub one out to Lucy Lawless's actual tits. Not somebody's Photoshop version of it. Just... <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like, I'm not saying that, like, you know, I didn't do it to that, too, because I wanted to kind of, like, round out my bases. But, you know, finally getting that, that final check mark was great. There you go. But are you talking about the Evil Dead, like the actual Evil Dead horror movie that came out? Yeah, you know what? I didn't get to see it. I, I have it. I haven't seen it yet, but it's oh, gotten really good reviews. It's really good. Yeah. That so. was one. That was one that I can say that nostalgia worked in its favor. Yeah. Because because they actually they they didn't try to go the Army of Darkness route. You know, they right. didn't try to go funny. Uh, if they're okay. <sighs> Full disclosure: I laughed a lot in it, <laughs> but it's not supposed to be funny. I thought it was funny. But something wrong with me. So. <laughs> at least you admit it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, so you guys forget to laugh at stuff. So, but there, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of horror in it, and I love that. And it was it was actually really kind of a freaky movie, and I thought it was fantastic. I mean, I just I just ah, it was just wonderful, you know. And that and in this case, yes, nostalgia definitely helped. I appreciate that. Thank you, sure. nostalgia. I think one of the best reboots so far. In the last couple of decades, would have to be Star Trek. You know, yeah, I agree because, and you know, it's funny because I'm a I'm a giant Star Trek fan, and then, but I loved, I loved. I mean, I know they just they were just they were just trash, and I don't even care. I don't care. But the the Star Trek the Next Generation movies were so good. Yes. Oh my God, they were so good. Up to First Contact, Resurrection. Not so much. Nemesis. Ah, but at least we got um 
What the fuck is his name? He played Bane. Help me. Uh, Tom Hardy. Thank you. We got Tom Hardy out of it. I was going to call him Tom Brady. <laughs> 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 I don't know why, but I couldn't get it out of my head. Um, hey, we got, we got Tom Hardy out of it. Who played young Picard in that, which was weird because now you see him in Bane and like he's like too swole to control. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You know, and that, but I, I don't know. I really wish that they would have been able to do more with the next generation crew than what they did. I felt like they didn't really get like a very good send off. But these new Star Treks, so good. Ugh, I mean, like, even with the gratuitous lens flare, I still like them. Sure. Even if, even if Star Trek in the darkness. They like they telegraphed that garbage about him being con like five hundred million light years into the future. Like I, I went to this movie going, he's gonna be con, you know that, right? <laughs> and I and I told Terry, I said, Now watch, they're gonna do the Star Trek two scene where 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 uh Spock's gonna die and and they do the, you know, my own friend hand on the glass thing and, and they totally did. <laughs> yeah, I I'm not gonna lie, I kinda did a victory lap in the theater. <laughs> I love calling shit like that, especially that's specific. And, you know, oh, but I really wish, I really wish they hadn't done the con. Con! Yeah. Fuck you. <laughs> that was just a giant middle finger. Uh, that, that was too much. I was like, look, you hit every other bit. <laughs> you know, you hit, you got him con. Yeah, that's cool. You did the death scene. Yeah, all right. But, but then the con, especially like, I don't know. It just, I was like, man, it's just kind of pouring on the cheese <laughs> because like you expect, cause like they were all very, it was all very well acted yeah. and the, you know, everything about the movie had just such high production. But then you got to remember the original Star Trek was William Shatner, who is neither. <laughs> so, yeah. like, he can't, I mean, he's not really an actor. Not really. He's just William Shatner doing various William Shatner things yep. with a different name. So when he, when he did the con thing, it was so cheesy that it was believable because it fit in with the rest of his acting. Sure. But then Zachary Quinto was so good throughout the whole thing, and he played Spock so well, and then he does the con thing, and you're like, eh. It's, yeah. Huh. yeah. Uh, not, not, I mean, it's a good line. It's not your line. <laughs> you know, it should have been somebody else. Yeah. I mean, any, anybody, really. I mean, it, <laughs> I, I could have been a guy underneath the thing as they're flying by. He just, like, he's possessed for a moment. Con! <laughs> and then snap back to him. I would have been like, oh, all right, that's better. That would have made more sense. You know? Yeah. Because the con scream is not a good, it's not a good, well-acted, thought-out line. I mean, like, you know, and like, <laughs> the rest of the movie was so, so well thought out and so well acted that it just, it, I mean, even in Star Trek 2, it's a little cringy. So I'm mean, like, eh, he oh, probably, yeah. You probably shouldn't have did that. Especially the, the close-up on his face, and he's all sweaty and shit. Because and... <laughs> it's the original. That's what they <laughs> did. It was stupid. And it's, I mean, even even as a kid, I was like, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> he's this guy with really curly 80s hair, and I don't know why he's yelling. <laughs> <laughs> stupid. So, my turn. Okay. Nostalgia. I mean, this is another one of those elephant in the room ones we got to talk about. Uh, the Ghostbusters movie. Do we feel that nostalgia has served it any level of justice? I want to say that the only reason why that movie exists is because of nostalgia. I mean, obviously, you know, Ghostbusters, yeah. But they there's no way they could have, could have made a movie similar to that not using the Ghostbusters franchise and it green lighting i mean right it i didn't did you, see it but you did. did yeah i did and so i mean this is a case of i don't know i don't know how i feel about it because the movie it wasn't really good but it all but at the same time like you can't go in if you're going to watch it you can't go into the go into it expecting ghostbusters okay. because it's basically just the name really is all it is and and you you get a lot of comedy in it but it's not the kind of comedy that you got out of ghostbusters because ghostbusters was all about like you know basically being serious about the ridiculous and then having a character like bill murray 
being skeptical of literally everything and and making fun of the seriousness of the ridiculous. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We're like, you've got ghosts and shit, and he's just like, he's like, well, yeah, okay, you could do that, I guess, or or, or something similar, or like, you know, the 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 goofy, even the goofy bits in Ghostbusters were still like more more witty and less slapstick, and and in this one, it's just it's just wall to wall slapstick, and and I just I found myself, I I mean, I watched the movie. And I really, I really tried to give it like a good, a good go, and and I found, I found that like if you attempted to compare it to Ghostbusters, in any way, it it made it so that you could not enjoy it. And in this case, nostalgia really crippled this movie, which would have otherwise probably been like you know kind of a B-listed, um, shitty action movie. It, but like because I'm in there, I'm I'm thinking of Egon, I'm thinking of Winston, you know, I'm thinking of uh, all the Ghostbusters stuff that went into the first one, which is another one of those lightning in a bottle, like you know, the perfect script, perfect director, perfect cast, you know, right time, right place. Could they couldn't even recreate it? Ghostbusters two wasn't even that good. So I mean, Ghostbusters, wow. this new one. I mean, go, well, Ghostbusters two was okay, but it wasn't Ghostbusters one. I don't know, man. I liked it. Don't get me wrong. I don't but know. I, I kind of like was, them both about the same. <laughs> I like Ghostbusters one, Head and Shoulders above the second one, but Ghostbusters two still had that same vein of comedy. But it wasn't to me. It just wasn't as good as the first one. This one though, it's all like you know, it's dick jokes and it's and it's you know, um, I don't know. It was goo and it was just like it, it just I don't know. There was a lot of there was a lot of stupid humor in it, and I don't. Ghostbusters was never about stupid humor. If I went into it and I was like, it's just another Melissa McCarthy semi-physical bullshit comedy, I might have given it a chuckle or two. But like, I still held in my mind every time where they're talking about proton packs and then they're talking about ghosts this and ghosts that. This is a Ghostbusters movie. And I, you can't help but try to draw correlations between the nostalgia the, for the original one and then this one. And in so doing, you look at the new one, you're like, this is basically shit. <laughs> I mean, Chris Hemsworth was the worst. He his performance wasn't terrible, which is ironic. Uh, or I should say, actually, his performance was extremely obnoxious, which is ironic because he's probably the best actor out of all of them. Oh. And, and I find that hysterical because he's not a very good actor either. So like you've got like you've got Thor. Oh man, see, here's the thing that kills me too: is that like you got people say so anyone. Uh, I've seen all these these different bits about anyone who said they didn't like Ghostbusters is misogynist, which is insane because it's a terrible movie. But like this movie is reverse feminism where like they have Chris Hemsworth being like this sex idol blatantly right. like in like one of the characters is literally I fucking him every time he's on screen and he's dumb as a box of shit. I mean, he's legit fucking stupid. He when he hears a loud noise, he goes, oh, God, that's loud. And he covers his eyes. Wow. I, wow. And, le- and here's, the, here's the level of comedy in, in this where he, he wears glasses without lenses. Ergo, he actually needs, le- he actually needs glasses. Cause, and they asked him, why do, you wear gla- why do you wear glasses with no lenses? And he says, well, the lenses just kept getting dirty, so I took them out. So he still needs glasses. How the fuck does he function then? Someone gave him these glasses to fucking see, and they're, they're, he has worn them to the point where they get dirty, and now he doesn't keep the fucking lenses in there anymore, and they can't wear them. Why is he wearing them? But oh, fuck it, how does he do anything? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, that doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense. I mean, like, if they said that he was just wearing them just for, like, you know, aesthetic purposes, that would be okay. I would be fine. Fucking whatever. But he actually needs them. And then the thing where he hears loud noises and he covers his eyes, I just want to die and I want to kill him. <laughs> Actually, I want to kill him because he's fine. I want to kill the fucking guy who wrote this shit. I'm like, it's fucking retarded. It was awful. <laughs> that makes me so angry. And like, but if you had put, if you had taken the same role and assigned it to a woman and made it like Ghostbusters, the original, where it was men, this movie would have been eviscerated. Sure. I mean, from top to bottom. Unless I mean, it was, uh, God, why can't I remember her name? Unless it was Sigourney Weaver. Because right. she's pretty manly. 
Yeah, I know, but I mean, like, even but if you if you if you had objectified her, or or uh, talked down to her in any way, it would have been the same scenario. And that's essentially what they did with Chris Hemsworth. He was sure. just a big, stupid, hot looking guy, and that was it. And they overused that so much that my wife actually asked if I wanted to leave the theater. And, and she she was fed up with the movie. She was done with it. She she wanted to leave about halfway through. And I gave. I mean, we stayed till the end. Um, but I mean, man, I don't know. Because I mean, even in the original, Janine, the secretary, she was hard as hell. She was fucking tough as nails. Yeah. She was also wasn't really like relegated to being the hot chick either. And I don't, I don't know. I feel like this. I feel like the movie really could have been a lot better than what it was. I feel like it was almost that. I feel like they almost went out of their way to attempt to snub the the originals. Yeah. Like to thumb their noses at them and be like, we can be different, but in being different, we're no longer the franchise we represent. The Ghostbusters is another one of those ones that, like, it, as far as nostalgia goes, it was pretty much bludgeoned by its own uh, by its own backstory. Okay. Yeah, they oh, just there was so much of it, so much of it was so bad, and I just I just wish that it, they they had been a little bit more serious about it, which is weird because I'm not supposed to be a comedy, but I mean you don't have to be, as the original Ghostbusters proved, you don't have to be slapstick to not be hilarious. And it seems like the entire crew, which I'm guessing probably mostly came from Saturday Night Live, which Saturday Night Live is only slapstick now, um, that that seems to be that's all they know it, is just how to, you know, be physical, be slapped around, be stupid. And and that's and that's that, you know, they, they don't try to do anything intellectually funny or witty. And that's that's really a shame. In this case, nostalgia did not help us. It did not give us a good thing. Sad face. <laughs> Very sad face. I was really kind of hopeful. I mean, like, I know that, like, the trailers look terrible and all that kind of stuff, but I was really hoping that it was going to be really good. I mean, it wasn't, like, the, the devastating, you know, pile of shit that everyone says it was, but, I mean, it also wasn't that good either. What would you rate it, 1 out of 10? I don't know, like a like like a 6. I mean, wow. it just, I mean, it wasn't a bad movie. It just wasn't good to me. But I also just, I mean, it's just not my kind of humor. Yeah. Fair enough. If you had to pick something that would come back, make a, make a comeback, what would you pick? While you're thinking, I'll tell you what my pick would be. Okay, yeah. Maybe, <clears throat> well. American Gladiators. Are, are there enough strong men to do American Gladiators left like that aren't going to jail for some reason or another they were all on steroids every single one of them <laughs> even the women <laughs> even the women obviously right, especially the women but it honestly didn't matter it was a good show I love the games it was like an adult version of Guts or uh, Legend of the Hidden Temple on Nickelodeon. Yeah, but see, the difference was that Legend of the Hidden Temple, you actually got smarter for playing it. True. But you don't see a whole lot of game shows like that anymore. I mean, like, any of the Nickelodeon game shows. No, you, you just get to see game shows of, like, who's fucking who, and it's the worst. Who's fucking who, who's dancing with who, you know, all the regular game shows of, you know, who wants to be a millionaire, or... um. Wheel of Fortune, all that shit. But you never see any physical ones anymore. I mean, there is Ninja Warrior, which I do yeah. enjoy. And there's also, what's that other one? Um, that one where they just beat the shit out of random people with obstacles. Oh, MXC? No, it's on... That's, like, that's not even American. No, it's, uh, it's, not, it's called Splash or Sploosh. <laughs> I don't watch TV, so you're going to have to figure that one out on your own. Uh, Sorry. I'm still cool, cool. I read books, so. Wipeout. That's what it's called. Yeah, I don't even know what that is. Um, basically, they don't take anybody that's like really athletic. <laughs> <laughs> so they take soft targets? They take anybody, and a lot of them are overweight. So they run them through an obstacle course, typically like on a large catwalk of some sort, and there's a giant pool underneath. Sometimes it's full of foam. Sometimes it's not. But... They'll get you to a point where it's like a super impossible like platform, just like a video game platforming, where like 
like you'll jump on these bouncy balls and you have to keep on jumping until you reach the next platform. And if you sit there and you wait too long, they'll send out a fucking like thing that kick your ass off of it into the water. Like it's a great show, but you're not supposed to win it. You're especially given your physique typically. They just find the most obnoxious people they can and just beat the shit out of them. Which is entertaining. I do like that. But American Gladiators, man, needs to make a comeback. I I could agree with that. Um, but here's the thing. You know, you know that if American Gladiators did come back, one of two things would happen. Actually, probably one of three things would happen. One, um, you, you would have the the producers would obviously fix it now. You know, because back in the day, American Gladiators, if you won, you won. But you know that now there would be like some kind of a script and like, you know, the contestants would win or lose depending on that script. And that would pretty much suck all the joy out of it. Yeah. Um, Two, uh, you would have people saying that American Gladiators is exclusionary and it's unfair because it doesn't include, uh, you know, games for people who are overweight or not physically fit or, or, or only games for people who are only physically fit. And it's just, you know, it's not right or whatever. Or three, you'd have people screaming that it's exploitative because these women shouldn't have to be running around in leotards that make it easier for them to run. They should be in full burkas or whatever. I think uh, I think you're stretching there a little bit, Frank. But, I actually don't. I actually don't. <laughs> but some of that I would I would agree with. Um, and the fact that you said that it would be scripted, it I don't know why it just sparked in me. It reminded me of uh, this election cycle. <laughs> yeah, it's scripted. I mean, it, it's basically already thing. been decided. Yeah, it's. All I mean scripted. the. You know, not to go on that political tangent, but the uh, the the chick that just recently had like she had confessed and just uh, announced her resignation, Debbie Wesserazaran, uh, of the of the DNC. Yep. Fuck her. Fuck her. Not because like not because I was gonna vote for Bernie, but fuck her because she was like because she was involving herself in deciding what who the American people wanted to have represent them. Oh yeah. She She's not. She is not the one that gets to decide that. No, she literally contributed to rigging the election. Yeah. So I mean, no, that's not cool. No. It's not cool, Maine. Not at all. Oh yeah, and she got hired by Hillary like immediately. Oh, there's a shock. Yeah, it's not like you know. They. <laughs> and then and then you know Bernie endorses her. I wonder. I wonder how many how many paychecks he got for that. Given that like that basically like I mean. Hopefully he dies in the next four years because no, no, because seriously, if he tries to do anything else for the next four years politically, he's basically screwed himself because he, he lost all credibility. Um, I don't know. I do. I mean, like people are pissed as hell that, that he's decided to start back in Hillary after all the shit that he was saying about like, you know, she did this and she was crooked. I mean, like she's been legitimately like determined to be crooked well. and he, and he was all against her. And all that Wall Street money, and then now he's like, you know, we have to, we have to elect Hillary. Like, whoa, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> the thing is, is he's a man of his word. He said it from day one that if he lost, he would endorse Hillary. Okay, so, that I mean, I yeah, that, that's that's kind of the uh, the customary thing to do in both of those parties is basically <laughs> look at you, Ted Cruz. Right. Well, Ted Cruz actually said, "Fuck all y'all." He lost legitimately. Bernie yeah. didn't lose legitimately. He he got screwed. I think and he's that's still almost why won. I wouldn't do it, you know. I mean, like because it's like I know that I got screwed out of this one. I'm not doing. I'm not. I'm not fucking. I'm not playing your shit games. Like if if I legitimately lost and I didn't feel like everybody was trying to fuck me over, then that would be one thing. Right, right, and that and that that's the thing is uh, people think that you know when you when you join the Democratic Party or whatever, you sign a contract saying, okay, these are the terms of being in this party. If I lose, if I lose the race, then I will support the the winner. Or um, you know, I have to I have to follow. This. I'm not allowed to run as an independent if I lose the race. You know, so that those are like the two big rules of, of being in the party, and they'll they'll help you get what you need. Well, the two things is they weren't backing. They're, they're supposed to be non-biased. Okay, they're supposed to say, okay, whoever the people want, we will support to fight the Republicans. Okay, that's that's rule number one. 
rule number two is, uh, you know, no, that's it. I think that's just the biggest rule is they're supposed to be non-biased. Now, this, the fact that they broke that one big rule by obviously picking Hillary from the start and funding money to her, yeah, bypassing you know the donation limits or whatever. Um, but since you know, since the Democratic uh, Party broke their rules, I feel Bernie should have broken those rules too. But you know, he's a man of integrity. He doesn't want to go go back on his word, even if other people are. I feel like I feel like I would like to believe that, but I also think that that might be giving him too much credit. I also think that you know. He might have been like, you know, you should be voting for Hillary because it's the, you know, whatever. I don't care. Hold on. Hold my shekels. I want to count the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's he's never really been about the money. I mean, even even <laughs> just just look at his living situation. He he never really cared about the money. Here's the thing. So I guess I guess then in. I guess that should be like a, a pretty a pretty sad indication of the state of of this country that I am more inclined to believe that he was paid for than I am that he is doing what he said he was going to do because that's what he said he was going to do. Like I actually just don't believe that. I find a hard time believing that he would be doing what he said he was going to do because he said he was going to do it than just <laughs> because that's just so sad. Well, if his plan was just to roll over and die, I mean, he uh, he almost fucking won. <laughs> Even though the odds were against him, he almost won, which is incredible on its own, but... Which would have been really nice if, you know, we uh, didn't have a, a an anti-Bernie system going. Exactly. But anyways, it's all just... <laughs> Well, that was good because it was that's nostalgia because we used to have a country that you know did what it said it was gonna do, but now we don't that's that's funny <laughs> oh i'm I mean it's not funny it's sad but it's sad i mean I, to a degree I mean now we see everything because of media, but who who knows what happened back then because we couldn't see it all, yeah, but they still did stuff for America though you know more so than now. A lot more so than now. I'm looking will, at you, Reagan, even though like you had terrible economic policies. One American gets killed, and Muhammad Gaddafi loses an entire air base. I mean, like, I feel like I feel like that's an appropriate response. <laughs> uh okay, so on the topic of nostalgia and re- retro appeal. Have you heard of the show Stranger Things? No, but I feel like I'm probably not going to care unless it has an NC-17 rating. It doesn't, but... That's unfortunate. It's on Netflix. Um, They came out with the the first season. Basically, it's set in the 80s. It's set up exactly like an 80s-style movie, uh, but with, obviously, production of today's standards. Um, it took an approach of doing something in a setting that's technically retro. Uh, basically, there there's a bunch of kids playing D and D, uh, and it starts actually happening. There's this telekinesis girl, and then there's a monster in a in the a different dimension, and this, that, and the other. But everything is like it's very. 80s ish like even the the intro title has like like the heavy electronic keyboard feel to it and, <laughs> and like the, the ti- wee, 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 wee. Well, yeah exactly and the title like you know pans into view just like tron <laughs> like it's got oh, all it's like fantastic it, it, it's really cool and, and it's a completely unique story it's not rebooting anything but it's set in a time that's memorable because, you know, that's not too far ago, not too long ago. But no, I mean, especially with the way, like, everybody is smoking at all times. Are we talking, like, cigarettes? 
cigarettes. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Everybody, like, it doesn't matter my, where. My interest in this is just kind of doing this thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the little, little key things they, they did to make it 80s. No, they smoke it in the boys' room, though. They're smoking everywhere, including the boys' room. Boys' room, church pews. <laughs> like, it's funny because... You know, birth clinics. Because the sheriff is a main character. He, he wakes up one morning... He literally lights up a cigarette and drinks a beer, and then he uh, goes into the bathroom to brush his teeth, brushes his teeth real quick, and downs a beer, and then smokes a joint. Wow! It's awesome. I strongly suggest giving it a giving it a go. Uh, but I, I I feel like that is a different approach to nostalgia or retro. That it takes a whole new idea but sets it in a retro age. And I'd like to see more of that. I mean, yeah, I could, I could see that. I, you know, another, uh, we're talking about fran- a franchise that has actually benefited from from learning from nostalgia and then moving on was actually the Planet of the Apes, uh, which was super good. Uh, it took a, I mean, like, and, and it does just enough, just enough nods to to the previous iterations. Not the Mark Wahlberg one. God, please no. And but then, so so enough nods to the old ones to be interesting, and to have you go ah, if you've seen it. But then not so much that you need to have watched the other one for this to be relevant. Sure. Um, but then being being fantastic on its own, and I mean, there's a lot. There's actually a lot, I guess, of of different franchises that could could or could may or may not have suffered from their previous garbage, like. Fucking the new RoboCop. No, which I, is just a, a, it was just a shit show. It was it was literally terrible. I didn't even bother with that. Don't it, don't. it just looked bad. It it was. I watched it because I love Gary Oldman, but then you know, Michael Keaton's in it and he's terrible. And then the RoboCop guy, you know, believe it or not, John Cena's a better actor. Uh, and I find that. I find that very hard to believe, but <laughs> it's the truth. John Cena is a better actor, and I can't even see him. <laughs> he's, he's right behind you. <laughs> I want one day to uh, for us to. I want to for one day for us to make that joke, and John Cena to actually be behind us. You know what? He's everywhere. He might just do that. <laughs> I hope he's not everywhere because if he if he. He has seen some shit, huh? He's seen some shit now. <laughs> but John Cena, that's why, like, you know, whenever you see him, he's progressively, like, he looks a little more tired and, like, a little bit more, like, worn out, drawn out, because he's been standing behind me watching what I fapped to. He's just, he's just like, I can't. I just can't. I don't know what's <laughs> happening anymore. I don't know what's good, what's right, and what's wrong. <laughs> My fat material has broken down John Cena to the point where he actually can no longer tell what's right from wrong. You know, I don't think that's true at all. Look, shut up. <laughs> okay, so how about franchises that were rebooted, that were clearly just a cash grab and an attempt to merchandise? Well, RoboCop. Ninja. I would say for sure. Okay, how about Ninja Turtles? Ninja Turtles, obviously. Um, Ninja Turtles is to me i think i think i think michael bay is fucking um megan fox and i think and i think that he is making ninja trolls movies to progressively fuck her deeper <laughs> <laughs> i mean like i feel like maybe his penis actually has like depth markers on it <laughs> and with each subsequent sequel that she's put into like you know she she kind of go, it goes like progressively further down so we might see another three, you know, Ninja Turtles movies. I was also going to say Transformers, but that kind of goes right along the lines so I mean, of... You know, but, like, it starts over with a new franchise, you know? Yeah. They are literally, like, okay, so the Transformers movies are just fucking garbage. And Mark Wahlberg, him. you're still... Yeah, it was Mark Wahlberg. You're still terrible. You're still terrible. Stop getting into shit like that. Stop getting into movies. Stop being, in general... I mean, you're a terrible actor, Marky Mark. Your fucking shitty, stupid pants and your idiot songs. But the, uh, <laughs> so, tran- the new Transformers movie. Here's the thing: 
I hate that the 80s cartoon had more believable, approachable, and and uh, endearing human characters in the fucking cartoons than literally all of these movies combined. Except for the one crazy guy that runs the deli that's a CIA op guy or whatever. He was funny, but he was only funny. He still should probably not be in the movie. Peter Cullen is the one reason you watch Transformers movies and all the robot action that goes on. But they, why do they have to make them all look like fucking scary ninja jitsu flip trick stabby dagger knives? Why can't they look like fucking cars <laughs> or tape decks or literally anything? But like they look like they look like some like like if if the brave little toaster had a fucking nightmare where like all the metal in the world came together and formed this giant clompy monster thing. That's what they fucking look like. They look ridiculous. I agree. I agree. But I, I agree. but I still love Peter Cullen. His voice is amazing. And every time, every time he goes, Autobots roll out. I'm like, <laughs> 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 like my childhood I mean it's like my childhood's high five me from the 80s you know <laughs> I mean Michael Bay is already kind of a travesty of a director anyway yes um, but I'm glad that somebody made him just so that Peter Cullen could be on the big screen and do Optimus Prime because I'm pretty sure that most people would look at it and be like I'm gonna do a movie based on a cartoon that was based on a toy line who the fuck is Hasbro, you know? Because <laughs> then we got the G.I. Joe movie. Oh. Did Michael Bay do that one, too? Oh. <laughs> I don't know. Did he? I can't remember. I, I don't know. I'll let you look it up. I don't think he did. But, I mean, you know, because that one was terrible. So that's what Hasbro also made Ninja Turtles toys, too, actually. So Hasbro's pretty much bad in a thousand on shit movies. I don't know. Um, However... I am pretty excited for this Power Rangers reboot. I'm not. I know you're not. You don't you don't count. Look, okay. G.I. Joe, Transformers, Ninja Turtles, all shit. Yeah, G.I. Little- Joe also shit. You Which know? One? My you? little My little pony. Also shit. I mean some some questionably fantastic porn from Rainbow Dash, but you know, still four Four franchises that are just just trash. Four. I'm sure if they brought back Smurfs. They'd probably fuck that up. Wait, they did. <laughs> they did, didn't they? Five. <laughs> Five cartoon franchises that have all been trash. But again, Smurfs made good porn. But, you know, whatever. Power Rangers, though, is going to have Brian Cranston in it. He's going to play Zordon, isn't he? Or yeah. Like- and Elizabeth Banks. She's a pretty good actress. I don't know who that is. Uh, Zach and Mary make a porno. No. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. <laughs> um, pretty much every Seth Rogen movie. Oh, that's, I'm definitely never going to know who she's done. Because I fucking hate Seth Rogen with a passion. Because he fucked Green Hornet so bad it made me want to kill him. Look, even he is sorry for Green Hornet. He's said he it before. Be. He should, you know what he should do? He should go. He should go underneath of the Warner Brothers water tower lay out a mat and he should cut his fucking stomach open and weep at how bad he fucked that thing up and just and he just just was a yard at a time just pull his guts out until he dies because i hate him for that i love the old radio broadcast of of the green hornet fuck seth rogan fuck him and fuck his apology <laughs> it was funny in his uh that one movie that he made with all his friends basically uh, this is the end <laughs> Well, they they totally made fun of him about that movie because how bad it was. Like all of his friends, uh, James Franco and all of them, they're just like, "What fucking Green Hornet?" He's like, "Look, guys, just just stop, okay?" <laughs> <laughs> and I love I love because I had an interview or whatever, and he was like, he was like, oh, "I'm such a fan of the Green Hornet," and I'm like, "Where? Where was that fan anywhere in this shit show?" I mean, right. I didn't even watch it. I saw the previews. I was literally so fucking mad that I wouldn't watch it. My dad watched it, and my dad was like, it was pretty bad. And I was like, you love terrible movies. <laughs> if you're telling me that the movie was bad, man, you can cash that shit out. <laughs> I mean, it must be goddamn awful. 
Speaking of which, he also watched Batman vs. Superman in the last couple of days, and he also hated that. So, my dad loves the Marine, the Marine with John Cena in the WWE movies, and he loves all the sequels to the Marine and thinks that they're fantastic. But he thought Batman vs. Superman was a terrible movie. Let that sink in. <laughs> Well, let's uh, let's get this wrapped up here. The last thing we're going to talk about here is the Killing Joke. Oh man, the Killing Joke was atrocious. I mean, like I went to go see it uh, in the theater. I I really, if they, I mean, like they needed. To, I understand that the the need for time was a major driving factor in and having the additional material along with the Killing Joke because the Killing Joke is only like sixty pages. Yeah. So even as far as like a storyboard goes, it would only be like maybe a half hour episode if they did it like in, you know, the animated series. I love that it was rated R, but I don't understand why. Right. Um, because there was not that much. I mean, there wasn't that much blood in it. I mean, some people got shot, sure, but there really wasn't that much blood in it. It could have been PG-13. Um, there wasn't any nudity in it. Uh, there wasn't any swearing in it. Uh so I'm not really sure what the – like, I feel like it was a fictitiously given R rating. I think that they probably went in there and be like, we're going to try to be edgy, so give us an R rating. Uh, yeah. Because, you know? I mean, like, I know that, like, you know, you have to, like, earn certain criteria to be not an R rating. But I think that, like, R ratings would probably – like, if you just went to, this, went to the, the ESRB or whoever the fuck does it and just say, give us a high rating, then you know, they'd probably give it to you. Um, the, the additional material for Batgirl uh, did not make sense. Uh, it really, it really bastardizes her as a character, and it really goes against literally almost everything that is Batman and and the Bat Family and the 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 material that that they used for her, you know, backstory pre Killing Joke for us to feel sorry for was terrible. Because it wasn't really Batgirl. I mean, like nothing about that was really Batgirl. Like you know, the fact that the fact that Barbara Gordon and Batman went downtown to Pound Town um, was just wrong, so wrong. And the fact that like the the whole time during the movie, she's she's this like this whiny fuck struck puppy, where she's like you know I'm you know like I really wish that Senpai would notice me. <laughs> you know I I'm like I, what the fuck is this? I mean, I don't understand. I mean, she's never like that. Barbara Gordon was, she was fast. She was concise. Boom, this is what I want to do. Boom, this is what I'm going to do. And then she does everything she needs to, and she kicks ass, you know, on equal footing with, with Robin, et cetera. And in this, there is no Robin, which makes also no sense because there should have, I mean, if they're going to have her in the uh, a supposed backstory, I mean, she didn't come in until fucking way later. Yeah. I don't understand why, you know, Dick Grayson's not around because that's who, well, I mean, because if they did, then most people probably be like, well, why isn't she fucking him? Why isn't she fucking both of them? Apparently. (laughs) Why aren't they just like, you know, why don't, why don't they get, you know, Nightwing, Robin, the Red Hood, Batman, just make this bitch airtight. You know, why not? Hey, we are already fucking, we're already fucking her up. Might as well really fuck her up. (laughs) You know? (laughs) I, I just, I don't understand why they, why they had to, to. Because then, like the whole the whole thirty minutes before the killing joke actually started, she's uh, you know she's whining about like you know her feelings for Batman they're not being requited and like you know it's just a one way love and then she's mad at him and she wants him to you know notice and then they bang and then now it's awkward and you know they're not I mean, it's like who is this? <laughs> this isn't Batgirl. I mean I don't know who the fuck this is, but I mean she's pretending really hard. And then she gets, you know, then she gets shot. And I have never been, I never thought I would get to a point in my life where I was glad Barbara Gordon got shot. <laughs> like, this bitch gets crippled. And I'm like, good. Fuck you. <laughs> it serves you right, you fucking clingy cunt. You know what I mean? Like, I hated her as a character. We were, they were supposed to make this 30 minutes endear her to us. And I didn't. I hated her. Yeah. She's everything I didn't want in a, in a fucking annoying girlfriend. You know? I mean, like, you know, oh, my God, I don't know why he doesn't notice my feelings. Shut the fuck up. (laughs) Fucking sack up, Pinocchio. (laughs) But then, like, you know, the killing joke goes on, and the killing joke was just as riveting and interesting as as the the source material. Uh, They left out a lot of, I mean, like, it became, but because of the 30 minutes before, it became less about the actual material that was sort of like, you know, the... Uh, a, a glimpse into the psyche of the Joker, so much as it kind of like they tried to make it like a revenge thing, yeah. you know. And I'm like, that doesn't 
I don't know why, you know, and, and then they were like, you know, I'm going to get him, Jim, for, you know, and then, like, the implication is for Barbara, but no. I mean, it wasn't. He was going to get him because that's what they do. That was the point, that it's a constant ring around the rosy. Batman catches him. Batman puts him away. Joker gets out. Joker does something awful. Batman catches him, and the cycle repeats itself ad infinitum. And because of that 30 minutes, it just it lost all of its punch to me, you know, where, where Batman really was just kind of, he's just kind of an asshole mm -hmm. and Joker, you felt sorry for Joker. And I also wanted to high five him because he shot Barbara Gordon. So I don't know what my, 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 my emotions were doing a weird thing. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I, it was super hyped up and I was like all excited for it. And then I finally watched it. And I, I got to, be honest i wasn't exactly giving it my full attention uh but when i was paying attention to it it just it was weak i mean you're right it didn't have any of the rated r elements i mean the cursing was minimal and you know the f word itself was limited to oh f this or frick <laughs> like you know um, yeah, like they literally said "f this." Yeah, they didn't. And like they they censored themselves in the script, and yeah. I'm like, "You have an R rating. You might as well go for it." Yeah, exactly. Um, and the sexiest it got, the sexiest it got, was whenever Barbara ripped her shirt off, and you saw her really atrocious teal bra, which I am pretty sure that if you're Batgirl, you're not gonna wear an underwire. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm pretty true. sure that you'll be bleeding everywhere. <laughs> that's true. Um, I don't know. I. I don't, as far as voice acting is concerned, uh, Kevin Conroy, good as ever. I mean, that was great. Yeah. I think Mark Hamill was good, but not as best as, not as good as he used to be in the uh, animated they, they series. Did, they, they really kind of like, they didn't, they kept a lot of the really biting stuff out, you know? Yeah. I mean, like, I know that there's a lot more in it that was like a lot, he, it was a lot more of the psychosis in it than, than they really kind of gave Mark Hamill to really work with. So I felt like he, he was kind of like constrained to what they wanted. Yeah. <sighs> it could have been so much better. It could have. I mean, like, really, if they had just, you know, like I, like I said, I understand the additional 30 minutes being necessary. But I mean, like, man, if they had just done it right, if they had just done like a, a, a better story going into it than All that. Right. I mean, they could have literally done anything other than having the two, having Batman and, and Batgirl banging. Because, like, I mean, aside from the fact that you literally just, you know, the majority of people who are going to watch this are Batman fans. The majority of people that are watching this who are Batman fans are going to look at that and be like me and be like, what? Mm -hmm. Why? What? Because that didn't make any sense. And at the next, the next fucking person who tells me, really, Batman Beyond, they were banging because it's a thing. Yeah, it was also not fucking canon. I mean, like, clearly not canon. Terry McGinnis also gets murdered by fucking Superman. Durr. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless we're going to start, like, because then we can just start going, well, I mean, you know, if, if Batman Beyond is going to be canon, then Injustice must be canon, and then that must mean that, Bat that Superman's a bad guy forever now. Oh, and the, the Joker nukes, what, Gotham and... Metropolis. Metropolis? <laughs> yep. Yep. I didn't play through the whole game, but I did see that part. <laughs> yeah, Batman Batman murders Lois Lane on accident. And then the Joker nukes Metropolis with a suicide nuke. <laughs> <laughs> and then, well, no, he doesn't suicide with it, but he blows up Metropolis with a nuke and then Batman or Superman punches his guts out. <laughs> but then he kills... He also kills Shazam, and that's not nice. Shazam's like 12. <laughs> he slowly burns a hole through his head. I mean, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, like, it was definitely some blood sport kind of shit, but... Yeah. That is not about nostalgia, though. <laughs> <laughs> but right. Man of Steel, also very, very derivative of nostalgia and also massively let down... You know, because it also suffered from from nostalgia fucking up the script. Well, not really. It fucked up the script, and because people actually know who Superman is, I don't know if that counts as nostalgia or not. Yeah, I don't know. Let's uh, let's wrap this one up. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the subjects we could literally talk about for hours. Oh yeah. Well, thanks for listening. If you like what you heard, uh, please comment, 
rate us, subscribe, do all that good shit, and uh, support us further. The more supporters we get, the better shit we'll put out. And uh, we'll be doing another one soon. So until then, see you later. Bye.